Welcome to Unit 4. In our first lesson in Unit 4, we'll talk about two things, approximating with the tangent line and applications of rate of change. So when I talk about approximating with tangent line, in many instances in, in not just calculus, but just in life, finding a value of a function is pretty difficult or impossible. Now, with the use of calculus techniques, we can actually approximate the function value by finding a y value on a tangent line to the function. Now, since this method involves using a linear function or the tangent line function at a nearby point, it is sometimes called local linearization approximation, or some textbooks also use this idea called the tangent line approximation. So here's the idea. Let me give you an example. If you've got a point, 2 comma negative 2, and it's on this graph, I want you to use the equation of the tangent line passing through that point to approximate a y-coordinate when x is somewhere close to that value of 2, right? 2.1 or also 1.9. Now, I guess you could say, hey, can I just plug in 2.1? Yeah, you can, but can you try to solve for y? Mmm, kind of hard. And so, if you look at the graph, this equation actually is a circle, and here's the point 2 comma negative 2. And notice that at the t and when I draw the tangent line, do you see how values close to 2 is pretty much the same or pretty close to the tangent line values? And that's why we can use it to approximate, because the difference there is pretty small or very negligible. So, how do we do this? Well, you have to first of all figure out the equation of the tangent line, right? What things do we need for the equation of the tangent line? Yeah, slope and a point. We got the point. How do we find the slope? Did you say you know calculus? Yeah, so the slope is just the derivative. Thank you. So let's go ahead and quickly find the derivative here, please. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2y is 2y. And don't forget, extra little bit, y prime. Thank you. The derivative of 2y is then 2y prime. And the derivative of 4 is 0. Good. If I wanted to solve for y prime, I'm going to keep these terms on one side and move the 2x to the other side. So negative 2x is now on the right-hand side. I'm going to factor out the y prime. And that leaves me with y prime being equal to negative 2x all over 2y plus 2. And if I wanted to simplify, I can. I can just take out a 2 from everything, and I have this simplified form. Great! Well, now I want y prime at a specific point, right? I want it at the point 2 comma negative 2. So I'm going to evaluate this now at 2 comma negative 2. So that's negative 2 over negative 2 plus 1. And that gives us the number 2, which makes sense. It's a slo positive sloping line uh, in the graph. So that looks good. The tangent line equation then using the point slope form. Point slope form. We have y plus 2 equals to 2 bracket x minus 2. Ooh, lots of 2s. Okay? And if you want it in the slope-intercept form, you can distribute. It doesn't matter to me. But now, because you have a tangent line equation, now, finally, I can say, hey, let's figure out the y value when x equals to 2.1. So when x equals to 2.1, plug it in. So y equals to 2 bracket 2.1 minus 2. And then we'll take that 2 from the left side and move it to the right side, which is a minus 2. 2 times 0 0.1 minus 2, that's 0.2 minus 2, that's negative 1.8. And so I can say when x equals to 2.1, and I really should say the y value is approximately, is not equal to 1.8. And therefore, you see me here, oops, 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 oops. I really shouldn't be using the equal sign. Well, I can use the equal sign. I can use an approximate sign here, but I can say it equals 2 for these ones because we're referring back to the previous line. But the key thing is approximately. Okay? Approximately. All right, and then for part B, when the x coordinate is 1.9, well, same idea. I want you to just plug in 1.9. So y is approximately equal to 2 times 1.9 minus 2, take away 2, and that actually equals to negative 2.2. Okay? 
Now, sometimes they might not give you an equation. They may only give you pieces of information. So with this limited amount of information, can you figure out the local linearization to approximate this value of y when x equals to 2.01? Well, this hopefully gives you enough information. Here's your point. Here's your slope at that particular value. Great. So y minus 3 equals to negative 2 bracket x minus 2. And then, once again, approximate this by plugging in 2.01. So I'll say f of 0, sorry, 2.01 will be approximated by negative 2 times 2.01 minus 2. And then don't forget plus 3. Doing these calculations, I think I get the answer of 2.98. All right. And there you go. That's local linearization or the tangent line approximation okay the next topic in this section was this thing called applications of rate of change so taking a look at this now ooh, i give you a graph and notice this graph is quite interesting it goes up straight so some constant rate then it stops i guess and then oh shoots back down looking at the independent axis or the x-axis it talks about time okay and look at the y-axis or the dependent axis it's talking about rate of rainfall Ooh, in inches per hour so what's going on here so it says the graph at the right models the rate of rainfall in inches per hour so not how much rain is falling but the rate at which it's falling from midnight until 6 a.m. during a tropical rainstorm so I want you to write complete sentence to explain what point A is on the graph and indicate numbers and units. So if I look at point A, I'm looking at this point right here. Uh, we can say that the actual point is 3 comma 1, right? So the point is 3 comma 1, but what does that actually represent? Well, at 3, which would be 3 a.m., what do we know? Ah, the y value is the rate of rainfall. So I'll say the rate of rainfall is that's right one inch per hour done okay so once again the rate of rainfall is the y component here okay how about number four what's the slope of the graph between points a and b and it's a flat line so the slope must be yeah zero so in number five it says write a complete sentence to explain what happens there does it mean that there's no rainfall oh careful careful it's not about rainfall it's the rate of rainfall so the rate of rainfall is zero? Does that make sense? No. So what we're saying is between 3 and 4 a.m., what happened to the rate of rainfall? The rate of rainfall did not change. But it doesn't mean it was zero. It was just constant. So the rate of rainfall was constant. Okay. At what value, though? was constant at one inch per hour. It did not change. Okay. Now, how about number six? What's the slope of the graph between points B and C? Hmm. So the slope again. So slope uh, looked like it went down one for one hour it went. So down one, I'm thinking negative one. Now the question is, can you actually give me the actual units as well? This is bonus time. <laughs> what are the units? Units of this slope. Did you say inches per hour? Well, that would be the units for the y. So that's the change in y. What's the units for the x? Uh, hour. So it's inches per hour per hour. So in number seven, if I asked you to write a complete sentence explaining your answer in example number six, I would say something like this. Between four and five a.m., the rate of rainfall wasn't constant this time. Negative, so uh, was decreasing, right? Negative, decreasing. Uh, what was the rate though? At a rate of one inch per hour per hour or per hour squared. And that's what this means. So notice these are rate graphs. And so 
our y coordinates are rates and our slopes are the change in the rates Woo. all right tricky concept okay but you need to try the questions now okay assignment 4.1 is for you to do get to it